Hello, hello there. How do you like the music? This is actually a song uh, by Sonic Death, aka Arsenio the Baptist, aka uh, one of the most protestive musicians of all time from St. Petersburg of Russia. So yeah, he left Russia when the war started in March, and I was listening to him a lot, and once he left, uh, he came to Tbilisi here, and I met him a couple of times, and been to all of the concerts he organized here. It was all of the char charity concerts, by the way. Um, and yeah, it was really great. And anyway, I'm really happy to see you today. Here, today is a... Actually, today in, in Belize it's already 8th of October, but in the US and in some parts of Europe it's still 7th of October. So it's basically uh, the birth of Putin. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a piece of paper and a printer to print out the uh, Putin's face and to burn it, because, uh, you know, that's a big uh, flash mob in the Russian internet right now. Uh, but we'll, anyway, we'll we'll talk about the news, about the updates from Russia, what happened uh, in the last 24 hours. And also, yeah, let's greet each other, firstly, as an old tradition of, of ours. So yeah, hey, how are you guys doing? Hi from Sweden. Hello, William. You look a lot better from your flu. Thank you. Somebody was telling me that was COVID, but I don't think it's, it was COVID. Greetings from Auckland, New Zealand. Hello. Remember to five and like, share videos, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Joy, for um, letting, uh, reminding people to do that. Hi, Zach from Lut Luton in the UK. Hi from Zurich. Hi from Prague. Let's go. Hello from Romania. Greetings from San Francisco, California. Hi from Iceland, Germany, Latvia, Seattle. Seattle stands with Zach. <laughs> so that's, that's really cool that my favorite city in the US stands with me. That's cool. Hello from Bain Bainbridge Island, Washington, USA. Oh, Washington State. Perfect. Hi, Crowd from Switzerland. Hello, friends. Charlotte, North Carolina. Prague, Houston, Slovenia, Portugal, Germany. Привет из Техаса. Привет. Привет, Samuel. Hello. Hello from Germany. Ossendrecht. I guess some, some, somewhere in Germany. Maybe in Austria. Um, Ohio. Uh, House Kitchen, New York City, <laughs> New York. Uh, sunny Raleigh, 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 North Carolina. I've been to South Carolina actually. I, I also been to North North Carolina, but don't rem I don't remember the name of the village I've been to. We've celebrated a really uh, cool. Um, I forgot the name of the celebration. How how could I? Dzień Blagodarenia. Somebody who knows uh, Russian, help me. Dzień uh, Blagodarenia. Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, it's so easy. When you cook turkey, uh, uh, oh my gosh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, I forgot the name in English. Thanksgiving. So I celebrated my Thanksgiving in North Carolina last year. Hi from Ohio. Hello. Um, California, London. Hello from nothing. <laughs> Hello from, that's just the only message um, Geraldine left to us. Brooks, Bel Belgium. Uh, hi from New Orleans, Australia, India. Hello, man. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Lithuania. Thanksgiving. Uh, a polonium party cake to Putin. Yeah. <laughs> Another hello from North Cal Cal Carolina. Let's go. Hello from Switzerland. Belgian chocolates and Belgian fries. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Belgium, I would like to visit someday. Denmark, hello from Indiana, USA. Hi from Paris, France, Romania. Does Russia have Thanksgiving too? No, we don't, we don't have Thanksgiving. Maybe we have an analog, but it should be like really, really religious and most of the people don't celebrate it. Hello from London, hello from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, New York, Barcelona. Oh, nice, Barcelona. Brussels, London. Привет, привет, London. Hi, Zach, good to see you from Hereford, UK. Cool, cool. So, okay, guys, um, yeah, um, today is the birthday of Putin. So let's start, I guess, with this. I've prepared a list of the news. So the morning started from Yekaterinburg, Shadow Slava, from Russian Plus. Uh, and some activists, they've put a banner um, basically actually saying... С днем рождения, here it's Mrs. С 
днем рождения Владимир Владимирович, and I guess here is Putin. And it's just nothing, basically means happy birthday Владимир Владимирович, Putin. But they were still arrested for putting a banner. So because, you know, as I kind of mentioned in my previous live streams, um, that the propaganda of Putin, why it is different from the Soviet propaganda. Because Soviet propaganda was kind of making you to do something. The Soviet propaganda was like, yeah, we need to have a revolution all over the world, the, the socialist revolution. And the, if you look at the posters from the Soviet era, they always kind of trying to make you to do something, to join something. But the Russian propaganda, like Putinist propaganda, is basically based on the a politician, a, 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 a politi how do you say, a politician, yeah, politician uh, in Russian people, because they are apolitical, and, you know, you don't have to, you don't even have to support me, you just have to be out of the business, that's how basically the propaganda in Russia was working in the last 20 years, and the roots of this coming from the 90s, when, you know, Russia got something like a dem democracy, the first ever experience of Russian democracy, and, uh, in those periods, people were tired of democracy because it was like anarchy. It was so anar anarchy and people were so poor because the collapse of the USSR and the oil uh, cost so low for Russia. So, uh, I mean, the, the prices on oil were really low. So, you know, people were tired of the like, democracy because it, it seems like chaotic. And that's why right now most of them are kind of apolitical because they were just tired of it in the 90s. And, you know, democracy is hard. And people have to use to it in um, like decades. So basically, yeah, even those people who put that, they eventually were arrested. There is no video of this, but th yeah, I know, I know that fact. So that's how the day of celebration, Putin's birthday started today. In the meanwhile, <clears throat> I said about this um, flash mob when when people were uh, basically. Bur all over the world and Russia, they burn the portrait of Putin. Here we got this one. Here we got a photo of Putin uh, painted as a Hitler burning. Another video says, I wish you to die. Please, please go die. So basically, yeah. Another video with the Devil Putin with the musta with the Hitler's mustache. Another one. Another one. I re I wonder if there are some witches in um in these videos who are making some kind of I don't know some kind of black magic <laughs> on Putin's uh, burning face. I don't know. Here it says Putin is war. It's also burning. And you mentioned that most of the videos are made by women. I mean, at least I can say that by the hands. You know, it looks like... I don't know about this hands. Okay, here it's also hard to tell. Okay, maybe I'm just being a little bit... Uh, not just... Okay. Okay, another one. This one in uh, Dagestan. What does it say? <laughs> Putin is devil or something. Yeah, and Putin is in fire. So she she puts it into pieces. And then she burns it. Yeah, but that's that's about how the celebration of Putin <laughs> happened today. And the meanwhile, um I mean, that's from, like, of course, people who are opposed to the war. But at the same time, um, <laughs> the president of Tajikistan, he, uh, in the embassy in uh, Moscow, he managed to create this, like, secret or, like, this pyramids of uh, watermelons, different fruits, just, just melon. And uh, <laughs> that's like a birthday. It's like a birthday present to Putin, basically. I don't know. Are we living in a freaking like I don't know, like 15th century? Uh, what a, what a great what a great freaking um, 
gifts. <laughs> birthday gift. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck winning the war. <laughs> yeah, like you need those fruits to provide your mobilized ones. At the meantime, the one more person who um, kind of wished happy birthday to Putin was Lukashenko, the president, the cockroach of Belarusian or Belarusian Republic, the the dictator. He's uh, ruling in Belarus more than 22 years, I think. Yeah. And in 20, uh, 2020, there were big protests in Belarus. Unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't help to overthrow Lukashenko. Well, anyway, and <laughs> basically, this is the present of Belarusian uh, President Lukashenko to Putin. And basically, he said that he is gifting President his favorite tractor do you do you call it tractor for some kind of like gar gardening things gardening work so he uh presented this tractor belarus 1523.3 and he said that like some journalists asked lukashenko why did you decide to um gift exactly this tractor and lukashenko said because this is my favorite tractor and i do i use it myself and, you know, Lukashenko, it's almost, like, again, Belarus is almost like a meme, um, because, you know, the only thing that, like, Belarus uh, exports is, like, potato. <laughs> and I guess uh, smart young men who are, and, like, women, of course, all kind of people who are living in Belarus, uh, a lot of IT workers, um, they were even trying to build a Silicon Valley in um, Minsk, in the capital of Belarus under the control of the government, of course, because there were so many uh, young, young people who were into IT sphere and they were going to leave Belarus, but the government were trying to do at least something to, to prevent them from leaving. And so many people left Belarus uh, after the 2020, when you know the revolution didn't happen, unfortunately. And even here in Belize, I meet a lot of Belarusian people, and I don't know why um, they all left to Tbilisi, I mean, because all of the Russians, but for the same reason. But, you know, Belarus, Belarus didn't start the war. Yeah, they helped uh, Putin to, to like, how do you say, to station the army. And uh, they led the Russian army to go to the Kiev direction in, the f in February 2022. Uh, but they didn't participate in, like, mm, how do you say, by themselves, like, so openly. But still so many people left Belarus after Russia invaded Ukraine. So yeah, that's what Belarusian president basically gifted to Mr. Mr. War Criminal Putin. And at the meantime, <laughs> at the meantime, welcome to St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg State University had a, an event. Basically, this event was related to uh, the birthday of the president, the um, yeah, the, the anniversary of President Putin, who is turning 70 years old. So basically they made this whole thing and here it says Putin is my president. And this is the main square of St. Petersburg. Sinatska, uh, Sinate Square or something. <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh man, poor students. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we got this, I actually don't know where it comes from. But this basically, this picture always represents um, the will of young people to leave Russia. And it was representing this whole thing even before the war and before like 2020 when Putin changed constitution. Many people were living in Russia and wanted to leave Russia and uh, because of politics, basically. And you know, today, uh, Lukashenko gifted Putin a tractor, tractor and... Like this is the <laughs> like as we as we wrote in our Telegram channel. Finally, the famous cartoon about immigrating Russian Russians makes sense. So yeah, this is finally <laughs> having any kind of sense. So that's how the the birthday of the war criminal Putin uh, went. So yeah, let me read your comments. What do you think? <laughs> Well, he really did tractor, yeah. Uh, yeah, literally a tractor as a, as a gift. Okay, I've seen some donations. Let me check. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm disappointed. Why not Putin is my guy? I don't know. I don't know. They are, you know, they got to step up, I think. What do you think? Everyone behaving? I don't know. It seems so. Uh... <laughs> Hi Zach, hope you're doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good, Bronzo. Thank you. Uh Red Scare, thank you for 10 bucks. Red Scare, yeah. No um uh, unfortunately there is no uh, text. And Bob Weber, ten dollars. Thank you so much. Gave up with Telegram, sticking it to YouTube for my Zach fix. What do you mean? Gave up with Telegram, sticking it YouTube for my Zach fix. I don't know what do you mean by Zach fix, but I'm going to, of course, make uh, news uh, and like small videos, updates on YouTube also, not except live streams. I'm actually, since tomorrow, I'm going to be live streaming only three days a week. And most of the news, like really recent and latest news are going to be published on my Telegram. I'm going to make uh, an announcement later. There's going to be a separate video on the whole thing. And I will explain why did I decided to create Telegram channel and um, what's like the benefit of it so yeah and um, it's gonna be both over there and there so yeah uh, Lilian asked Zach do you feel some discrimination in Georgia since more Russians came um I feel it but I don't really experience it at the same time you know I kind of I know like what Georgian people in, in general thinks about so many Russians who came uh, but personally, nobody like came across to me and said like you are like Russian pig, go and uh, kill Putin by yourself, go protest in Russia. I mean, there was a case when we were, went to the protest with Natasha, uh, before like when mobilization happened, and there was one guy. He was an activist, and he was telling us that we are all collectively responsible for the war. So yeah, it's like why is, is Telegram popular in Russia? Because this is the only like private. Re um, the only private application Russians have, and it is created by Pavel Durov. And Pavel Durov, he before he created VK, and VK is the Russian uh, social media, basically like the Facebook of Russia. But then VK was taken, na nationalized by the government, and taken it away from uh, Pavel Durov. And then Pavel Durov uh, went, immigrated to the US, then to Canada, then to Dubai. <coughs> Sorry. And he created Telegram as an analog for WhatsApp because WhatsApp, they were allowing the FSB, like the KGB of Russia, to confirmation of the of their users. And it was not really like good for, for, for many of the young people, of course, who used Telegram. And then um, they, they created Telegram. Telegram was Russian government. They were trying to block Telegram. It didn't work out. I be, I remember this 2018. I was actually like a teenager. I was I was 16. Maybe I was either 16 or 17. And they were trying to block Telegram in Russia, and it didn't work out. Telegram Telegram was so advanced, uh, technologically advanced. They were not able to block it, and in the end, they blocked half of the internet by mistake. They literally blocked every single Amazon server and half of the internet is basically based on the serv servers of Amazon and half of the services, especially foreigners, foreign services didn't work in Russia. I remember those times when I was like a teenager, I used to play video games and I was playing a game like pub, like PUBG or something like, and literally the game was down for half a year because they were trying to block Telegram and they blocked the entire the half of the internet basically that's why so many people they saw it on example that you know even though the whole russian like state machine they were trying to block it but didn't work out so you know it means something so that's one of the reasons people started to use telegram and more and more people are joining joining it so 
And Telegram is really useful. There are many, many things and many like... There are many artificial bots. Like you can build a lot of things over there. It's almost like a separate platform. Like, you know, in China, they're, they've built WeChat, which is governmental, absolutely owned. And in WeChat, they can build other applications inside. Telegram is like WeChat, but a little bit like lower, and it's not owned by the government. It's owned by private people, by, by Pavel Gubdurov, who is one of the most democratic, uh, with a, with one of the like biggest public figures in protest to like community of Russian people abroad. So, you know, people, people really trust it. That's basically the reasons why it got so popular. Yeah. Uh, thank you for five dollars. My cell, myself fab. <laughs> Keep going. Glad you're safe. Yeah, I'm totally safe. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in Georgia. Um, I'm actually was thinking of moving somewhere else recently, but I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. So, okay, let me continue um, what happened also today. So today is a 16, 16, uh, 16 years, um, 16 years ago, the um, Anna Politkovskaya, one of the most famous Russian oppositionary uh, journalists, she was killed in the entrance to her building and uh, she was one of the most critical journalists of Putin and she was killed exactly on 7th of October and 7th, 7th of October is basically Putin's birthday. So somebody decided to make a gift to Putin by killing its main like cri critical op journalist. And you know, she was she is one of the faces of those who were tortured by the by the Putinist regime just for speaking the truth, the truth. And you know, as Nemtsov, as many others so, yeah, rest in peace, and um, I hope that, you know, Putin someday, someday Putin dies, and Russia's gonna be free and democratic as you wished. Yep. Also, I believe yesterday, or well, not today actually, morning, that um, the Nobel Peace Prize this year was awarded, awarded to Belarusian activist Ales uh, Bialyski. He's not Russian, by the way, so he's Belarusian. And uh, he is uh, like the manager we had in the Memorial Human Rights Center. And this is, this is Memorial Human Rights Center, of course, is recognized in the Russian Federation as a foreign agent. Um, so, you know, this memorial is a really big, like, uh, how do you say? Nonprofit organization for helping people who were tortured by the regime, who were jailed by uh, by the regime, and it was started all the way from by from Sakharov in the in the eighties, in the I believe in nineteen eighty five, when Sakharov was still alive, and Sakharov actually the guy who created one of the first nukes in Russia. Sorry, in in the Soviet Union, he created one of the first nukes. And then he realized what mistake he did. He started to become oppositionary towards the Soviet government, and they literally jailed him for many years. And then when Gorbachev came to power, he released Sakharov, and Sakharov created his own non-profit organization. I mean, of course, <laughs> Soviet Union, what do I say, profit? There, there were no profit organizations. So he created this fund, which helped people who were jailed by the political reasons, basically. So, yeah, that's... Nobel Prize by Alice Bialitsky. Yep. Mm, in the meantime, uh, the United Nations Human Rights Council, they've created today the mandate of a special rapporteur on human rights in Russia. It's really important. So the special rapporteur will be authorized to collect and analyze information on human rights violation in Russia and will submit like reports once in a year. It's unclear whether <laughs> Russia is going to be <laughs> copyright with the speaker. I mean, of course, they're not going to copyright. Um, so, yeah, that's really important. I mean, I wish he would, uh, like the person who is going to be the, ha the, uh, the reporter of the Human Rights Council uh, in Russia, not, not the Human Rights Council of Russia, but like a, a reporter on human rights 
in Russia, they will make reports more, uh, how do you say, more frequently than once in a year, because it's going to be too much of a information, too much of a content for <laughs> the, the once in a year. So, yep. Um, I've seen a donation, let me check. Uh, Shady, $10, thank you. Hi, Zach, so much respect for you, love from Australia. Hope you can visit our country sometime in the future. Keep safe. Thank you. Australia, I really love Australia. There is a really cool uh, Ukrainian travel blogger who used to make uh, videos in Russian, by the way. But once the war started, he stopped doing videos in Russian. And he filmed so many cool videos about Australia. Maybe you actually know him, because he's pretty popular on YouTube. Um, this is this is his channel. It's called Anton Ptushkin. And uh, he started doing his videos in Russian on the Russian channel since the start of the war. But he filmed about Australia a lot, and I really loved it. You know, someday I want to visit, of course, Australia. Melbourne, yeah, Sydney, a lot of the places. So yeah, well, coming back to mobilization. I don't know how it happened, but in the Republic of Altai, that's the whole state of Russia, not a single person was mobilized. Not a single one. Like the leader of, uh, of the region, the governor of the region, Vladimir Politaev, um, he said that according to the, to the words of our military commissar of the mobilization office, it's... It is a fact that at the moment in the Republic of Altai, uh, we didn't mobilize even a single person. Right now, the military office is still working on like calculating data and like getting data of the people who should be mobilized. But for now, we didn't mobilize anyone. So what it could mean? First one, that the leader of the state, the governor of the state, Vladimir Politaev, is actually is against the war and he doesn't support mobilization and so he by them by himself made an order not to mobilize a single person and another version is that the military system is so destroyed in the Altai region and it could be Altai is not really um, wealthy wealthy state that they didn't they didn't have any information and they were so corrupted because and they've lost all of the information about all of the people they could mobilize and i didn't really believe in this because you know they they could still mobilize at least a hundred people but just just even catching random people on the streets so i i think that, that just the leader of the Re republic of altai he is just against the war in general and it is it is really interesting we'll see how putin deals with this and even if putin gonna do anything about it we'll see but i guess citizens of altai republic should be really grateful for having such a governor even though they didn't elect him because there are no governor election so yeah That's at the meantime there is a story um but uh, from Salavat, there's a city, at the name of the, the city named Salavat, and here is a story by his uh, wife Palina, and the guy names Arsen. He received this subayana, this paper, pavestka, and basically he received it, but he got literally epilepsy. Like the guy literally got epilepsy because a couple of years ago he got into an accident and his brain was damaged. And uh, he got epilepsy, and they still mobilized him. He came to the military office. Uh, he shown them the papers that you know I have this medical condition. I cannot be mobilized. And they still we don't have any restrictions on mobilizing people. And they've mobilized him. So you know he is still over there somewhere at the military training uh, center, and it's crazy. In the meantime, this is really scary actually. Um, look at this. The man sitting with his daughter in the restaurant celebrating daughter's birthday and policemen came and gave him the subayana, like the, this 
military conscription uh, drafts in leather. He's asking like what's the po what the goal of your asking me? Like why did you came across to me? Because you know the, by law they have to if policemen asking you something or like ask you to show you you your document to the police, you have to like they have to have the reason why do they do that and they have to kind of sign it officially. Why are, are they doing it? Are you like like are there are people who are looking like you by the description somewhere in the papers or it's an investigate process investigation process of something. So, and the policeman is saying, like in the period of partial mobilization, uh, we are we we had to do that. We have to do that. He's, and he's saying, basically, the guy is trying to protect himself. He's saying, like, why, why? He's saying we are sitting celebrating the birthday in the restaurant. In the meantime, policeman saying, you don't have the right to film me and publish me on the internet. And that's actually not true. Like, policemen, they don't know, like, the law. In public place, you can film anything, literally anything, and especially policemen. There is a special, like, article by the, by, by, by the, like, the policeman department that says that policemen can be and should be filmed when they do their work, because they are the represented, they are not being the private per people when they are like serving. They are being the basically workers of the government who are being funded by tax money. So you know they are have to be filmed. Like you know in the U.S. every every policeman has a, this camera on the on the chest, and in Russia of course nobody has those chest cameras. Like some of them in Moscow they have it, but it's more like an exception. Yeah, the guy says, why, like, why do you come to us while we're sitting in the restaurant? Like, okay, once maybe on the streets, when we get, get out of the restaurants, well, okay, you can came across to me and ask me about something, but why in the restaurant? And here, another guy, very north face, I guess from a, actually a military office or somewhere. Not wearing, not being, uh, not wearing a police uniform. He's giving him this subwayena. So basically, he's showing the, the. You see, there there is a signature, but there is no stamp. And basically, the guy asks, "Where is the stamp? Where is the stamp? Where is the stamp, comrades?" And he said, by the some kind of uh, order, we don't have to put the stamp on this. <laughs> they are asking, do you refuse to show us the document, like your passport? And I guess they are just done. They cannot do anything by law. I don't know actually what happened to that guy in the future. Because that's the end of the video, but this is already getting getting crazy. Like we're literally going to celebrate your daughter's birthday to the restaurant, and the policeman just come into the restaurant and start to ask your document to give you uh, basically subpoena. And they literally they look at your passport, they write the paper like your name, and they give it to you. <laughs> that's crazy. <clears throat> What do you think about it? Zach the Russian, do you think civil war is coming to Russia? No, I don't think so. Hi Zach, hello. Um sorry, I My Gopniks on oh, my Gopnikin my Gopnik King stopped when I needed Vitamin supplements in order to keep squatting in photos. <laughs> what was that? It's been rumored they're doing they're going to conscript women over eighteen. They are conscripting women, but only those who got the medical um, medical knowledge, medical education, um, basically to send them on the front and be medic medics over there. 
only in such case. Uh, also today Putin signed the law for the, like how do you say, debt holidays. Basically, what does it mean that those who mobilized, uh, those who were mobilized and those who were sent to Ukraine as volunteers, they will be able to go to the bank and basically say, hello, I'm going to the war. I'm not going to be able to pay you for the debts, for the loans, for credits, for the mortgages. So you have to wait. <laughs> basically, you have to wait. And um, they can do that uh, at the time while there is military operation is going on. Military operation. Oops. And also it says that even after the, the the end of the military operation and once like the person is fired from the military and leaving the military there are 30 more days um, not to pay your debts to the bank officially <laughs> at the meantime that's crazy oh my gosh this video is i was laughing out loud when i watched it it's just crazy so this is i actually don't remember where is this okay this is in Sverdlovsk region, basically Yekaterinburg. Too much of Yekaterinburg news from in the last couple of days. Here is my bed. We are, we are laying here with the with the lads. Look at the amount of the of the beds over there. Yes. People literally sleeping on, on the on the floor. They they saying like look at this guy with a bottle of vodka and a whole table with food. That's crazy. He's showing you how it is outside, like people are arriving and arriving. Like look at people just sitting, drinking alcohol, like the guy who is filming, he said that they're drinking alcohol, and just eating, like military training, you see? He said this, this, wine, this one is drunk. This one is also drunk. He's saying like they are idiots. Like why are they drinking alcohol over there? Look at them out. Like literally, it's it should be a bed or a bench, and it's full of water, juice, and alcohol, and just eat, just food. One more drunk, he says. I'm shocked, he says. This is the this is the freaking bad, uh, restroom. Look at the amount of the like these boxes are Russian RME. Charging the phones over there. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video because he's going to the shower and there's gonna be a naked man. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna get 18 plus on this video or even get it, gets it blocked. <laughs> but it's crazy. Like this is crazy. How many people are over there in the? I don't know even what is it. It it looks like it's just some kind of like sport, sport, sport. How do you say? Um, like sport place. Like I don't know some playground, uh, for basketball or something volleyball. I don't know. Yeah, Gopnik Harming can fodder. Yeah, that's basically the same. Vodka special potato drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, like gym, yeah, right, forgot. Sports hall. Gymnasium, sports shell. Yeah, and those are the people who are gonna be like fighting Ukraine, of course. It's can fodder. Absolutely. Russia is like London in the 70s. I actually, I know what happened in London in the 70s, so you should uh, make me to know about it. Uh, meanwhile, we got the southern people, it's live stream. Let's go. 
Hello guys, welcome back to the live stream. Um, and 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 I oh my gosh, it's really hard to pronounce. Anna Irda, Anna Irda, Anna Irda. Ten dollars. <laughs> Sorry for mispronouncing it. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced it. That uh, that uh, thank you for all you do. Zach, keep safe. Thank you so much. I will. I will. I will. At the meantime. Look at this proud lady of Russia. So she is the, the like the head of some kind of village in Krasnodar region, and she wrote military subayenas like those papers of happiness, and she literally started to give it away to the people by herself. And she is not part of the military office. She is not a military person. She is a like basically manager of the village. She is not the person who is related to the army. And she started to mobilize people by herself. A really proud lady. Well, good luck. I mean I mean you could you could go to as a volunteer by yourself if you are so like Z supportive so to say. And uh, at the end actually it's it's funny. It says that the citizens they've complained about it to the state administration. And also there were some cases when the her house and some of the members of the administration's houses were also not attacked, but something happened to their houses. You know, something happened. I guess just the locals, they were pissed off by such a behavior of the of the head of the village. So they literally like did something. Well, luckily they didn't kill her. It's, or not luckily, who knows? Yeah. Oh man, Russia is, I don't know, it's like reading this news sometimes, it's like, it hurts not, it's, it's hard not to be uh, ironic about it. Five dollars by Thess, thank you so much. Um, in the meantime, I remember yesterday I told that they've cancelled the New Year celebrations in Nizhny Novgorod. The same happened in St. Petersburg, uh, because they said that all, uh, yeah, they said all New Year's entertainment, mass events, and even New Year's corporate parties will be cancelled. The money will be redirected to the needs of the mobilized ones. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I really doubt that all of the money which are going to be saved are going to go directly to mobilization, to be honest. Um, if we'll um, kind of think about the level of corruption in Russia, you know, it's kind of obvious that, of course, not all of the money they're going to be mm, <laughs> given to the needs of the mobilized ones. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, you know, there are the Ministry of Defense opposed the cancellation of New Year's events in the regions for the sake of supporting the mobilization. And they commencing, um, commenting on the transfer of the state funds to the mobilized, the Defense Ministry said that the armed forces have all the necessary equipment to provide each military both in the areas of special operation and in the training areas of the mobilized. The military department called cancellation premature and unnecessary. Oh, cancellations premature and unnecessary. Uh, and at the meantime, <laughs> in Yakutia, uh, instead of a first aid kit, they gave a pack of pads to basically heal your wounds, like put it in the in the hole, or, uh, like if a bullet hits your hand, for example, you put a pad inside and it kind of stops the blood. Um, and they, like the, the mobilized one, they were given this and a pack of chocolate. Look at that. He's speaking actually Yak uh, Yaku Yakutish language, Yakutian language. I don't understand that. But sometimes uh, he adds uh, Russian curses. And it's actually pretty funny because, you know, Russian cur Russian language is one of the most richest language in in the case of curse words. Okay, this is the first aid from the car, by the way. Not the military one, from the car. And here we go, the pads. Literally, just the pads. <laughs> One pack of pads, a chocolate. 
Administrasiya bizi mana atardı. Bilər? <laughs> it's funny how he speaks in Yakutian language and then like some curse words. <laughs> so I, it's it's crazy, like literally. No, where are the money for the aid kit, like medical kits? Where are the money? We know where the money. They are invested to the yachts. They are invested for the mansions. They invested for the property outside of Russia, in Italy, in France, in the US. And, you know, Russia is so corrupted. Russia is one of the most corrupted countries in the world. In the meantime, um, it is announced that on the summit of G20 in Indonesia in, the, in November, Putin and Zelensky both gonna come to the summit. And this is going to be the first meeting of Zelensky and Putin since the start of the war, since November. And uh, it says that both of them already agreed. So I guess they're both coming. There is no way back. And it's funny that the administration of this summit, they said that they will try to look for different hotels for the Russian delegation and the Ukrainian delegation. So there's going to be no tensions in the hotel. <sighs> yeah. In the meantime, Ukraine, like the President Zelensky, the President Zelensky by himself, uh, he made an announcement that Ukraine and uh, recognized the Kuril Kurila Island, Kurilsky Ostrova, as we say, Kurilsky Islands at the border with Japan. I mean, the, those are the islands that used to be Japanese islands, but after the Second World War, after the Second World War, basically when Japan Japan lost, the Kurila Islands started to be Russian islands. Actually, I'm not familiar. I'm not sure about those islands. Yeah, I'm not sure about this island if this part of Russia or not. But I know I know exactly that these islands are Russian islands. I'm not sure about this one. But anyway, the point is that Zelensky told that Ukraine is recognizing those islands as part of Japan, Japan I guess. And he says that the whole world should recognize the, those islands as part of Japan. And it's actually interesting fact that since the start of the war, the, the end of the Second World War, Russia and Japan, they actually didn't sign a peace treatment, um, yeah, peace treaty, between the countries. So officially, like by law, Russia and Japan is still in the in the state of war between each other. And maybe like by this move, Zelensky is trying to show Japan like, look, Russia right now is a mess. They don't have any army and all of the army of Russia is in the West and it's basically destroyed. So, you know, if you want to take your islands back, this is your point, this is your time, what he says. I don't believe that Japan will take, like, the, the islands will invade it or something. I, I don't think, think this is really, like, smart move by Zelensky. But, you know, you know, that's, maybe he got some, another plan by doing it. It's a pretty interesting move. Didn't expect that at all. Kaliningrad is ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check Kaliningrad. <laughs> Yara, Yara, oh my gosh, hello. I actually seen yesterday you also donated for Sofia. Thank you so much. Hi, Zach. It's nice to see you feeling better. It's hard to believe that this mobilization is happening in 2022. It's hard to believe that this whole war is happening in the 2022. The biggest war in Europe since the Second World War. It's crazy. Yeah. Tony Koma Komarutska, five dollars. Thank you so much. News about that girl in Ukraine you were trying to help. Uh, well, basically, she was really grateful. She was really, really grateful for everyone. And um, yeah, she she's planning on living. She's living in in a couple of days. I'm actually working on sending her money through Swift from my bank account because it's taking some time. But she got money to leave, but she doesn't have money like to 
to to rent an apartment right away. So she's gonna wait for those money to come, uh, to be received, and then like she will be able to stay in Kiev for a longer period. So yeah, Sophia is really is really a nice person. And yeah, uh, in a couple of days, if you do, if you want to check if the money like they were not collected and like thrown away, and I I like decided to keep them myself you can text her all the time uh sophia zubre on uh, instagram i mean i have the video with her and there is her instagram over there so you can text her maybe you can just write some supportive words or you can ask if she received the money and i hope she will receive them in a couple of days so yeah if you want to just check what's what's going on you know there is a way to do that yep and um uh, there is an interesting po post by BBC. I'm actually just going to read myself. So um, BBC kind of summed up what the regions of Russia promised for the mobilized ones to give them as a compensation and how much they're going to pay for, the, for them and their families. So in Moscow, every like monthly, monthly, um, sorry, like monthly salary, for one mobilized ones is going to be 50,000 of rubles. Um, if, like 50,000 of rubles, it's going to be a salary. And it's about like $900. Uh, also, if you got hit and you are a citizen of Moscow, you're going to be given either 500, from 500,000 of rubles, 10,000 of dollars, and 1 million of rubles, which is about 20,000 20, 20, of, rubles, of dollars. Yeah, I think so. And if you die, your family will receive three million of three millions of rubles. It also sa says that if you have family, if you have children, your children are gonna be um, are gonna be t how allowed to the governmental kindergarten for free, uh, and also all of the like sport sports event and sports like how do you say, kruski. Hmm. Like if you if your children wants to do sports, you usually you have to pay for this. Like for the for the soccer, for the football, for the basketball, different kind of like sections. But here uh, it's going to be like paid by the government, uh, by the Moscow administration. Uh, it's also said that the like the wives and like other relatives going to be like given help searching for a job if they need to make extra money because you know the they are men being taken meanwhile in the st petersburg it says that once the mobilized ones are going to be given out given away 100,000 rubles and those who are going to be actually come by themselves as volunteers are going to be uh, handed 300,000 rubles and also it says the same as in moscow so like children and families there is a bunch of benefits going to be for them like for example in a, in schools you're going to be provided with free uh with free f food uh how do you say Pro they, were, they would be provided with free food allowance uh also there's going to be free transport for the kids so different different benefits and also interesting that it is going to be possible to marry in like marriage office in a day in a 24 hours because by law if you are if you want to be married in russia you cannot just come and to be married in like 20 minutes as in las vegas for <laughs> or somewhere in the us i know it, it, it happens a lot over there it's not the case when you come to the mil to the marriage office you firstly uh, apply for the marriage and then only in a month as far as i remember or maybe in two weeks, I think in a month, actually. In a month, it's going to be possible for you to get married. I guess they are giving you time to think, are you really sure you want to be married? <laughs> yeah, not like in Las Vegas. So here, they kind of get rid of this whole stages. You can be married right away, less than 24 hours. In uh, Tver, the mobilized ones are going to be, basically, it says that the medical help will be given to the relatives and to mobilized ones without any waitings and lines and you know all of you say that russian like medical system is like free this is the best benefit of it but you know it's it's really trashy and most of the people who really wants to get some medical professional help 
they go into the private clinics all the time. Like even my parents who are not like oligarchs, even they all the time they go to the private clinics because just governmental clinics are going to kill you. They are still using Soviet um, equipment. They are still using like Soviet techniques and everything. So it says that they will be able to receive this Soviet medical treatment without waiting in lines. Interesting. In the meantime, in Crimea, the mobilized ones, uh, they will be given 200,000 rubles once and also a small piece of land. I don't really know how much land they will give out to the people, but I mean, there is going to be many people mobilized. How, how many land they will, they will find by, by, like, by this? Or what kind of land is this going to be? That's sad. <laughs> In the Republic of Tiva, uh, the government said that they will give out to the families of mobilized ones. Basically, oh my gosh, I forgot the word. The, like, allow lamb, baran. How do you, how do you translate it? Let me, let me, give me a second. Okay, um, I forgot. They will give sheeps, <laughs> oh, not sheeps, but sheep, to the locals and coal. Coal to warm up the houses and sheep. <laughs> oh, man. And it's also said that the children of mobilized ones up to 17 years old, they will be given 5,000 rubles, which is like $90. <laughs> so literally, if you were a, ch a child of uh, a mobilized person, you're going to be given uh, $19, $90. So that's the price to lose your father. The price of your father, 5,000 rubles. Oh. On Sakhalin, in the Far East, the island of Sakhalin, the families will be given uh, the fresh frozen fish. Five kilograms will be given to each family. <laughs> and it's in the government, it says they, they already given 9,000 kilograms, 9 tons of fish to this purpose. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. In Kazan, they've decided to create a fund for local businessmen who want to donate for the needs of the mobilized ones. And, you know, I guess the, war, the way it's going to work, like if you have a business, a small business, and you are still independent, and like, like FSB is just going to come across and say, okay, you want to have no problem with your business, then you have to donate, donate, this summary, this amount of money, to this fund and you're going to be fine <laughs> so and from this fund they're going to be buying medical kits different aids for the for the mobilized ones and also the families of those who are mobilized in the rostov region the family is going to be given 150,000 of rubles um in krasnodar only 100,000 of rubles you know it seems like it's it's different by the state in yakutia it is going to be 200,000 rubles per family and uh, the same like free uh, kindergarten, free food allowance in schools and free uh, trips to the summer camps for children. Uh, in Buryatia, uh, <laughs> my gosh, oh man, it's mm, drava, drava, firewood, yeah. Uh, in Buryatia, the, mob the family, so mobilized ones, will be given firewood to make their houses warm because, you know, the men are being taken away from the family, so they are not ready to, um, to prepare firewood to make the house warm. And yes, many households in Russia, they are still um, warming up, warming their houses during the winter by the literally fire and wood. Like my grandmother, she is my great grandmother. She is not an exception. I actually have a video when I was helping her to prepare the. You can find it on my YouTube channel. I will actually, I will find it right now by myself. Uh, she is preparing every summer a bunch of firewood just to warm up her house because there are no gas lines, uh, in Komsomolsk, uh, in in the village where he li where she lives. No, no gas lines, literally no gas. Uh, there are, what, what else? 
Three is no coal, and coal is expensive, she cannot afford it. So she is literally warming up her house with... Uh, where is the video? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, I'm going to show you just the way I was prepared. I was helping her. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you see? That's what I was helping my, my, grand, my grandma with. I was helping her just to prepare this food, and we, I'm like, I'm using this troll to, oh my gosh, I was, uh, where is, uh, oh yeah, this is how it looks like, literally, my grandma, my great grandma, she goes there all the time, like, during the winter, just to grab some wood, and to put it in the fire, just to warm up her house, and many Russians are living like this. Even though the Russia is one of the richest countries on gas and oil, but most of the villages, they have no benefits of it. Literally. All of those money from selling it to Europe or somewhere else are going to Putin and Putin's friends. So it says, yes, that uh, per one family, there is going to be given 10 cube meters of firewood. And those who are living in the north of Buryatia region, they will be given 20... Um, Cubes, uh, cube meters of firewood. <sighs> Russia. Russia, man. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. <laughs> Russia is mainly a third world country. Yes, Russia is not mainly. It is, it is a third world country except Moscow and St. Petersburg. We use firewood in Norway too, even if we are a rich country. Do you use it like if there is a village with a population of, let's say, a, a thousand people? How most of the people warm up the houses? By wood? Zach, did you visit Wisconsin? Yeah, I've been to Milwaukee. I think I have some pictures, but it's going to be... Way too long to find it. I, you know, Milwaukee was pretty cool. Um, was pretty actually um, kind of messy in a little. And I was living in a hotel, which was in a really bad neighborhood, I think. Um, and I went there for a concert. So I've stayed there for only one day. I've been to the embankment. And then I went to the, like my hotel. Like I've been to downtown, my hotel, and then back. Yep. We also use wood and gas. Yeah, you say wood and gas. Watch the Zach classic going into the ice water. Yeah, I got this video. Oh my gosh, before the war, I was making a very different content. And, you know, I wish I, was a, I, I, I would be able to create such content again. But unless there is war going on, it is, it is uh, ethically inappropriate in my opinion to make videos related to this yeah there is a video of me uh going to the ice well where is it actually give me a second oh here it is i was actually filming it with natasha yeah uh it was a very different this tradition comes from russian orthodox church however orthodox yeah here is natasha here is me. It was actually a freaking cold, man. This is like Russian Orthodox tradition to get in an ice hole in the 17th or 19th of January. January 19. Yep. So I was... Oh my gosh, I freaked out. Yeah, that's me. A little bit puffed up after, after the trip to the US. I literally lost my conscience. Actually, you have to, to do that three times, but I only did... I only did two of them because literally my brain counted this as three. It was so freaking cold, so my, my brain was like, okay, man, you just gotta get out. And it doesn't matter that you have to make it three times. You just have to make it right away. And the worst part there, you know, you, you, are, you are going on the ice like without feet. You cannot go with the slap-ons inside of the water. So you are, once you're getting out, you are literally wearing no sleep on or something. And uh, my my feet was sticking to the ice. And if I felt not, I, I didn't felt my legs at all. And it literally felt like pieces of my skin. They were sticking to the ice. It was awful. Uh, nowhere. 
no way I'm gonna do that. But the funniest thing that, you know, there were six, no, there were actually seven of the, like, tents for the people. There were seven tents for the people, and uh, the, the thing is that the three tents, they were made for women, three tents, they were, they were made for men, and one tent, a separate tent, was made for our mayor, mayor of Khabarovsk, because it was filmed in Khabarovsk, and he literally, look at this, he got a freaking red carpet coming from his separate um, tent. So there is just bare eyes for ordinary people. Yeah, and there is literally bare eyes for ordinary people. Many people suffered because of it. And here you see his, his like... I feel so alive. I want to help people right now. <laughs> they also made a right Yeah, I mean, it was so like... I don't know, we laughed out loud with Natasha. Like, literally, at Tsar. At Tsar. Man. Yeah, three genders. <laughs> Men, women, and mayor. <laughs> oh man. Привет, пришла повестка на 1 ноября на срочную службу в военкомат. Меня не беспокоило пять лет, но повесток и тут бам повестка. Говорите. Говори, что буду делать, я не буду. Прислали по почте, не расписывался. Слушай, ну, если ты по ней не придешь, там же штраф 3000 рублей. Это же не мобилизационная повестка. И законы по мобилизации, вот о не мобилизации, а вот именно по срочной службе, они не поменялись, что ты там должен... Они хотели их вести до, до мобилизации. Я помню еще, я сам об этом задумывался, там, это было в январе или в декабре, они хотели там ужесточить ответственность за то, что ты не приходил по повестке на срочную службу. Но они этот закон в итоге так не провели, а просто забили на него. Поэтому сейчас, если ты просто не приходишь и гасишься, я думаю, ничего не будет. Ну, главное, не живи по месту регистрации. Вот, что еще могу сказать? На улицу много не ходи, метро особо не юзай. Не знаю, распечатай себе повестку, что тебя уже мобилизовали, еще что-нибудь фейковую какую-нибудь. Короче, да, успехов. Не знаю, что сказать. Sorry for speaking Russian, but there is guy he he received a paper. Плюс ко всему, она не должна считаться врученной, но при этом она оторвала корешок, якобы я расписался гниды. Жесть какая. Oh man, I don't know what to 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 advise to you to be honest. You know, it's yeah. I mean, he didn't sign it. That's the problem. He didn't sign it. He like they gave it to his relatives, I guess. Yeah, I mean, good luck to you. I don't really know what to say else, you know. Russia is getting crazy. Oh, Frank. Frank in Texas. I remember when you went to the island abandoned youth camp. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's been a while. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, let's get back to the news. Uh, in the meanwhile, in Buryatia happened this. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this poor Lenin with the V letter. Man, poor Lenin. Even though I'm not a communist, I hate Lenin. But look what, like, why did they put this freaking V to the freaking Lenin's head? And in Russia, we have this Lenin statues all over, in every city, in every main street of Russian cities are called Lenin Street. Every single one, without exceptions. So it is, it was put on fire. Okay. Uh, remember yesterday when I was when we were fundraising money for Sophie, I told you about the Zapor uh, Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia incident. Actually, uh, a Ukrainian guy he texted me. Um, yeah, my friend Maxim. I met him in the U.S. I didn't met him in person, but he's a friend of my friend, and he told me that it's not the right the right way to pronounce it. It's not Zaporizhia. But it's like Zaporizhia. It's it's like really Ukrainian pr uh, pronunciation. It's hard for me to pronounce. So it's a different pronunciation. So you would know. Uh, so actually, it said that eleven people were found dead, not three people, as I said yesterday, and fifteen were found injured under the bunch of bunch of trash. Basically, it's crazy. And also. And also Today they also shoot the Zaporozhye and the, the ro not the rocket, but like, not missile, but something landed in the yard of 
панелька. Soviet block, basically. There were also news uh, that the private company of Russia named Wagner, they are hiring the soldiers from Latin America and Europe. So they are trying to uh, hire people from Turkey, from Serbia, from Czech Republic, from Poland, from Hungary, from Germany, Canada, and uh, Moldovan Republic, and some of the Latin countries. And it says that they are offering $10,000 a month as, as a payment. And it already says that there are already people who are fighting in Wagner from Latin America, Czech Republic, Moldovan Republic, and Hungary. That's crazy. And of course, a bunch of prisoners who are going to be uh, hired and like drafted soon enough. Uh, also, it says that uh, here, like it says that satellite Starlink um, by Elon Musk didn't really work well recently in the battlefield. Here it says set, uh, the map of Starlink satellite blackout. It is close to Kherson, close to Zap uh, Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia in Russian, and close to Donetsk. And basically, you know, they need the internet to use drones a lot, to send information a lot. In Izum, in Liman, in Svatova, so a bunch of places. I wonder if this is related to the tweets of Elon Musk about the whole, uh, the, uh, this war and about Taiwan, I don't know. Interesting. We will see the reaction of Elon Musk it, 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 if, if it will be provided. Do you think that Russia would use a tactical nuclear weapon against, like, a Ukrainian ta tank column? I don't think so. Well, firstly, I cannot really ex imagine that Ukrainian army going to be having big enough column of tanks to use a nuke on it, even, like, if there is a need, a need to use nuke. I don't think they are that stupid to go in the big numbers together, because, you know, still Russia is able to like missile them to put a miss to send a missile or something so uh, i don't really believe and i also don't believe that putin is going to be able to use nukes i, exp I explained it many times i don't believe in this but at the same time i didn't believe in the possibility of the war with ukraine at all so oh. tactical nuclear weapon is overkill for a tank column it is for a city yeah i mean maybe the uh the guy means you know for a city it's going to be like a war how to say it's gonna be like too much but for a column in the field somewhere it's gonna be not too much anyway any nuke usage in russia i think it, it will lead to the third world war easily so i'm i also don't believe in using nukes <clears throat> and in uh, liman and svetogorsk they were recently um deoccup deoccupied oh my gosh i'm sorry uh the bodies are starting to be like in the forest russians who were graving the citizens that they killed the peaceful people of liman and svetogorsk and there were a lot of bodies were found over there and it is really sad really really sad i know how many people died in ukraine how many civilians died in ukraine since the 21st of february nobody knows and it is a huge number Nobody knows how many people died in, in Mariupol. And Mariupol was a big city, and it's absolutely destroyed. And not everyone was able to leave. So it is impossible for now. It was impossible for it is impossible for now to to get to know how much of a civilians died. But it's crazy. In the meantime, <laughs> British intelligence service says that half of the Ukrainian tanks consist of captured russian tanks <laughs> russia is the bad i actually have seen even a meme of like you know poland volunteers or people in poland uh fundraising money for one tank for uh ukrainian army at the same time ukrainian army advancing and capturing three tanks by themselves <laughs> yeah um 
So by their uh, report, it says that Ukraine has probably captured at least 440 tanks and about 650 armored vehicles since the beginning of the invasion. That's what the British military estimates. And more than half of the current available tanks fleet in Ukraine potentially consists of captured vehicles, according to the authors of the report. Yeah, that's actually, I've read this post from our Telegram channel, by the way, uh, which is being developed. Um, <laughs> and uh, one, the last, the last uh, uh, news I wanted to tell you about today, in the our state Duma, the, how do you say, the head of the committee on the questions of the family, of women and children, Nina Astanina, she said that we need to, um, to kind of give it a birth again to the free courses of the basic military training in schools. Because on, in her opinion, children have to know how to deal with weapon and how to um, provide some medical help like first aid basically and uh, it's interesting that you know all the time in russia they are saying that you know sex education is prohibited it's going to destroy our nation our tradition but at the same time they are literally militarizing the schools and the children and we got this we got this picture look at this and you know um, i'm not surprised with this picture myself i've i've seen many of the veterans of some soldiers coming to the art coming to the school trying to hire us in the army trying to kind of make us to how do you say to serve in the army so i'm not i'm not shocked at all it's, it's russia it is russia so yeah, we got, I guess, maybe 10 last minutes of the live stream. So if you have any questions or something else, make sure to ask them. And, oh, I actually missed a $100 donation by Ask, Ask Fosterwood. SK Fosterwood. Yeah, thank you so much for $100. Man, this is a lot of money. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much. I mean, it is too much, guys. Nah. Thank you. Hi, Zach. I sent you uh, some money through PayPal too. Hope you can still get that. Tried emailing you about scholarship in the US. Oh, really? I haven't seen that. I mean, I'm getting a lot of emails, so I'm trying to answer them step by step, but it's not working all the time. Thank you for all you do. I truly believe your streams are touching hearts and changing minds around the world. Love, Katie from Louisiana. Oh my gosh, Katie. Thank you so much. K K Katie? Katie. It's like uh, Katya in Russian language. We got the name Ekaterina, like Catherine, and uh, Katya is like a shorter version. So I guess Katie, it's also like, cool. Thank you so much, wow. And Luna, cool name, five uh, dollars. Hi, Zach, hope you have a great day. We are watching you right now. Love, Luna. <laughs> 5.2 years old. Luna, you are five years old. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Luna, I guess. And thank you for your parents, too. Um, yeah. I like the name Katya. Yeah, me too. Get some sleep, sir. Uh, nah, my schedule is broken. I need to do something about it. So we got some time. Uh, I also, actually, I wanted to show you the pictures of me um, marching in the Russian school. I think somewhere I should have those pictures. I actually have no idea where, like, I got my list of of the safe pictures on VK. Maybe I will be able to find it. But while I'm finding it, you can actually listen to to some of the songs about Russia. There is like this guy. He's like a rapper, but a really smart rapper. He he. They call him like Russian Oxymoron or a Russian Eminem, and his name is Oxymoron. And he made many thoughts songs about Russia as a state and many songs about like our government, about the war. And once the war started, he went, he left Russia and he made so many uh, cherry concerts around the world. And yeah, I'm just really happy that I'm the person who used to listen to his song. I mean, and it's pretty like lyrics of it. Sometimes they just 
but it's just hard. Yeah, so while I'm looking at my pictures, you can listen to this. I mean, the most, the, the most, the most important things are actually like the lyrics, but um, while I'm looking, you can just listen. Oh, look at this. For example, yeah, this is uh, my page on VK, and basically this is my picture holding an AK, and I'm here. Um, how old was I? I was in the sixth grade. So I was 12 or 13 and we were playing a scene in the school to support the veterans of some kind of war and we were like a core like a core of children taking holding AKs and singing a song. I don't I don't have the picture fortunately in the video but it was like you no know, my my military experience uh, bringing up in a militaristic Russia experience so to say that's actually actually also me uh, being eight years old I'm trying to look for this picture, but I got just so many of the safe pictures, it is almost impossible to find it right now. I mean, I'm trying, maybe, maybe it will work out. Anyway, so if you have any last questions, you can ask them, I will try. Uh, <laughs> Russia is a military six state, but not army. Yeah, true. Do you like Miyagi? Nah, nah, I don't like it. I mean, it's a typical, like, Russian ra um, hooker rap, as we call it. Uh, I don't like it. I mean, it sounds well, but I don't really like the... Like, the lyrics, I'll, I'll, I don't... Firstly, I don't really used to listen to rap. Like, I only listen to it if it's, like, related to the government or something. Because it's some kind of, like, poetry. And if this poetry is stupid, I'm not gonna, like, read it or listen to this. Uh, and, you know, if it's just about, like, how you, like, you know, um, being cool and, like, doing something, it's, like, you know, girls and then drugs and everything, no, I, I don't listen to this. But if it's related to the, to the, actually, like, war-related content about, like, oppression, what I, what I actually played, you know, that's pretty fine. Well, that's actually me with my friends, but we actually did it for fun. It's a paintball. Not strike ball though, but that's a paintball. It's some kind of birthday. So, yeah. Me being uh, 15 years old, I think. What else? What else pictures do I have? Boom. Where is the chat? Oxymiron had some problems because of his show against the war. No? Yes! Today he actually was claimed as the foreign agent. 
as a foreign agent, and um, as far as I know, he's not in Russia right now, at the moment. Where are the photos? I cannot find it. That's that's really weird. I cannot find it. I got so many of the pictures and still can't find them. No. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I like this one. It's literally a Russia. And I've said it in 10, 2018. 2018, 30, June 30. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I cannot find the pictures of me marching. Um, but it was a pretty, pretty interesting experience. I mean, not interesting. It's literally militarizing, like l l teaching every kid to march in a school. I don't know. I don't think that's really right. Um, Zach, have you heard of many, uh, or how, uh, many of the American rap songs for peace and against the war? No, I haven't heard it. I, I don't. Really, firstly, I don't listen to rap to American rap, especially. Um, I used when I was a like teenager. Sometimes I did, but no. Nah. Is Zach ever played Airsoft? Unfortunately, no. Watched many videos of Airsoft, but never played myself. I really want to try. I really, really want to try. But I know it's painful. I didn't like paintball because it was really painful. It's not like playing Counter-Strike. You, know? <laughs> you actually feel some pain. So, yeah. Uh... Yell to the night. Thank you for ten dollars. Have your parents been to visit you in Georgia? Take care from Spain. Thank you, Spain. Um, my parents actually offered my mom to come and said I'm I'm gonna cover like the half of the price of the transportation cost, but she said still like I don't have the time. Like I don't have the holiday. Like, not the holidays, but yeah, like holidays. Um, she basically didn't have the time, and I think she didn't really have the the how do you say the will to do that so yeah i always wanted to play paintball i'm a great hider <laughs> yeah great hider oh by the way uh, for those who are still there i actually wanted to show you the so 7th of october right the birthday of putin october and there is a song which is called Седьмое uh, октября, and which translates as seventh of October, and it, it is by the Russian rapper. Uh, his name is Husky, as as the name of the dog. But he is unfortunately, I'm I was so disappointed. But when the war started, he didn't spoke out against the war, and at the same time, he didn't like say something pro-war. But I was really expecting for him to be one of those. Uh, artist who is going to be saying something against the war. So he made in 2018 the song called the 7th of October, which is kind of related to Putin's birthday. And the lyrics are actually really, really good, and it's like related to the to Putin's rule. Uh, there is a phrase he said, like grave on grave, I dad. I died, but ma mafia is is gonna be here forever. And those, this is a phrase of one of the best friends of Putin. And this phrase is actually literally pa not painted, but it is it is being written on the grave of the best friend of Putin. And Putin have been to those to that grave many times. So he his friend said, "Okay, I died." But Mafia will leave. And it's like the... You know, it's all destroyed. The whole... Everything is destroyed. It's literally looking like the average house or <laughs> the average apartment of Russian pe people. And here we got still a portrait of one strong leader in a suit. Meaning, of course, Putin. Actually, the lyrics are hard. Let me let me find the translation for you, so I'm not gonna be like mispronouncing you. Uh, lyrics. Let me let me find it. 
How do I write lyrics in English? There should be. Okay, here here are the lyrics. I will I will try to, to just to translate. Give me a second. Oh my gosh, it's hard. Yeah, here we go. In the capital part of Gebau, that's some kind of service in Russia, captain of Geru, Geru Sveti armpits. New nobility in the uniform of FSB. And that's actually related to the book by FSB, related, like literally FSB, like KJB. They released a book where there was a phrase that said that FSB are new Dvaryani, and Dvaryani, they used to be nobles in the Russian Empire. So literally, they call themselves as nobles of Russia. We are new nobles of Russia. So meaning there should be peasants. And, you know, guess who are, who are the peasants? Uh, Snout of cocaine on government chipboards. And that's actually related to the accident when um, I believe in somewhere in Paraguay or somewhere in somewhere in Europe there was a huge uh, how do you say the huge box of cocaine was found and like literally like a couple of hundreds of kilos of cocaine was found were found in Europe or somewhere like in South America and they were uh, basically let me let me find the picture. So I will it will it will it will say for for myself. I'm not able to to tell it really. Wait a second. Yeah, two tons of cocaine were found in Brazil, and they were literally covered with the United Russia Party like <laughs> symbol. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Two tons of cocaine in 2018. And uh, they were, this whole thing, it, it was supposed to be sent to Russia. Two tons of cocaine. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is a meme. It says, like, give our cocaine back. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It is crazy. Well, maybe it is, like, made by somebody to, to like, fake it or something. But still, like, the fact that, you know, it is being, like, in Brazil somewhere, it was covered with the logo of United Russia, this is something. And here, uh, the Husky, the rapper, he, he wrote the lyrics, note of cocaine on government cheap boards, meaning this accident. Okay. Here we go. Wait. The photo turned the photo turned yellow like a wrapper of Karakum. I guess I don't really know what Karakum. Uh, next to it, Mikhail Ivanich. That's actually like a name of Putin that they used to be used in nineties. Because from one of the Soviet movie, Mikhail Ivanich mean, meant. The, bo the boss. So the many of the, in the Kremlin they call Putin like Mikhail Ivanich, which means like the boss. The boss. Peters Petersburg and two numbers on the back. I hide the photo in my hand and disappear into the tra transition. Don't really know what does it mean. The PM, I guess, the PM of Games Day Hangouts, I don't really know what does it mean. Nichka is like, we hiding something in the Colombian cannot meet, meaning cocaine, I guess. Hundreds of branches of Kushovka, 
What does Kushovka mean, by the way? I don't really know that. Kushovka. Kushovka massacre carried on. Wait. Kushovka massacre carried on out November 2010 was the murder of 12 people, including four children, in the village of Kushovka Krasnodarsky Krai in the southern Russia. The ethnic Tatar family of wealthy local former farmer Sever Sever Artyom. Ametov was targeted and stabbed to death together with visiting friends and a bystander. The mass murder shocked Russia and highlighted links between criminals and corrupt officials as the uh, perpetrators were members of a gang who had received protection from the authorities and operated with impunity for years. Okay, I didn't know about that. Wow. Sugar in the basement of Khrushchev key, Khrushchevka's buildings, and that's the case from I believe to 1997 or 98 actually. Wait, uh, Sakhar Rezani. 1999. Basically, there were cases of FSB blowing up the houses to say like, oh, it was made by terrorists from Chechnya to kind of justify the war against Chechnya. And they literally like bombed its own houses. Like they, they destroyed their own houses with people inside. And one of those cases didn't work out because somebody noticed some kind of like, you know, um, sh sugar packages in the basement and they called the police. And it appeared to be like a freaking like explosive materials. And uh, they it didn't work out to, to blow it. So that's, Related to this. For guests, an armored yacht. Sunbeam in the gut of the mine. I slide like a water meter on Kadyrov Street and Rotenberg Avenue, and literally there is in Moscow Kadyrov Street. <laughs> and Rotenberg is uh, one of the most corrupted friends of Putin. And there is, I actually don't know if there is Rotenberg Avenue, but I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely sure there is a street of Kadyrov. That's actually the guy. It's okay. Uh, this song is absolutely about like Putin. I'm sorry. So I'm. Um, <clears throat> if you would be Russian, it, it would mean so many things to you. Literally, I'm kind of sorry that you don't really understand that, but it's okay. Um, yeah. So you know, seventh of October. Um, Many, a lot of things happened. Uh, yeah, so. Like your draft paper burned in Belize. <laughs> uh, this is pretty cool, to be honest. I have only heard Russian Doom music before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe somebody would call this r Russian Doom music also. I mean, Russian Doom rap or something. Yeah, so, okay, guys. Uh, I think we're coming to the end. Uh of the live stream so if you have any other questions or oh, actually received a couple of donations let me answer um ibookies f3 five dollars zahar tibin it's a soviet punk rock i learned that there were songs that were too much for the soviet government the government tried to either come come the crowd jail them or do something to the bands i heard of kino of Asini, Zvuki, uh my and aquarium yeah of course i i know a lot about you know about aquarium actually uh, read a book about aquarium and uh, aquarium like boris grebenshikov he's a leader of aquarium band from the yeah from the late soviet union and uh, he is right now opposing the war uh, like he he's one of the voices of the protest and it's really nice you know interesting yeah and the guy f uh, from kino uh is really cool it's actually they call him uh, russian Russian cure, but <laughs> the cure. Who knows? Yeah, thank you so much for five dollars. And Z Lauri Lauriel Lauriel. 
The L'Oreal. L'Oreal. Twenty dollars. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a good young man with a good mind and heart. I hope you get to talk to Vlad Vexler and Jake Bro. I know Vlad Vexler, don't know Jake Bro. But yeah, I mean, uh, I can make a video with Vlad Vexler. I don't really see the topic to do that. And just to make the video just for the fact, uh, not, there is no point for me right now. Like, I don't really do, I don't really want to do something just to get more viewers or something. Uh, so yeah. So, I guess that's about it for the live stream. Uh, thanks one again for those who came here today for the updates. Uh, as I mentioned, the live streams for the future are going to be only three, three, uh, three days in a week. I don't know which days is this going to be, but it's going to be, uh, I'm sure, about... Okay, let me actually think, and then I will make a post on the community tab. And yeah, we'll see. So, okay, guys, well, once again, it was me, Zach the Russian. Good night. Spokojne uh, And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, people. See ya. Uh, and hope the war ends, of course. At Putin dies. Токарный цех, учебный корпус, краткий курс, железобетонный, обглоданный каркас, плотный голый торс, угарный газ, нательный крест, великий босс, натянутый холодный трос, тяжелый груз, долгий лес, долгий, долгий лес, аорты трас, долгий, долгий лес, долгий лес, ветвей, веселый пляс, а, талая вода, нескончаемый февраль, эх, с корабля на балды в котлован. Омский мясокомбинат сделано в России Ни за что просто так сделано в России Материнский капитал сделано в России Сделано в России, сделано в России Сладкий полураспад сделано в России Знак здорово, земляк сделано в России Ни себе, ни пацанам сделано в России Сделано в России, сделано в России Ты родился на сопках, рос на болотах, где финские кости, а над ними балтийские сосны и сонные сфинксы Василия Островской. И тут же неподалеку вы остервенело целовались в сырой подворотне. Она говорила, стоп, если твердый сосок накрывали холодной ладони. И когда ты возвращался...